Hi, so Dave Smith here. What we're going to do uh, today is the doing of wet plate. Now I've got this very, very temporary setup here for pouring plates. And in fact, everything about my setup is temporary. I have a spare room upstairs that I'm going to change into a workroom, um, but I'm a little bit, I'm a little ways from that. Uh, so I thought I'd set this up and I could at least get going with some wet plate. So this is my collodion pouring. I'll put fixer in here. I have two collodions here. I mixed this one a, oh, a couple of weeks ago. This is Poor Boy. I uh, haven't been very happy with it. Um, and so uh, I bought this Ostermans collodion, which arrived just the other day. Uh, I, will make, I will make my own. Unfortunately, I had real trouble getting the uh, potassium salts for the poor boy to dissolve. So I ended up making way too much of the stuff. So I've got bottles full of it and nowhere to put a, a different collodion. So uh, I haven't decided what to do about that yet. So I bought this Ostermans uh, formula off eBay just to give it a go just to see how it compares with this poor boy. The problem I'm having is that this doesn't flow as well as I would like and you get very heavy ridges on the pour off sides, not, not even just at the corner, and you get some crepe lines. And I think that's because this doesn't have ether. The, the whole point about poor boy is no added ether and no cadmium salts. Cadmium salts are pretty unpleasant things. However, I have now bought some ether and I have some cadmium salts, so I am going to make up a different uh, solution in the future. Anyway, this is my pouring station. We're going to make two plates uh, together today. I'm going to make one with each of these. I'm going to do one inside and one outside. So let's go over and have a look at my inside setup. I think you might be a little bit interested in this. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so I think I'm going to be stood a little bit in the dark here because the, the light's pointing away from me so that you can see the setup that we're going to do. Um, if you look carefully, you'll see the image projected on the ground glass screen of the camera. You will have to look a bit carefully because it's quite small in this frame. I'm using the 9mm Lawa lens here so that I can show the whole setup. So these are two Interfit F5 um, continuous lighting heads uh, and they come with each one with 535 watt compact fluorescent bulbs. Now this process is very light hungry. It's a, a very low sensitivity process. So I've changed those. I've put four 85 watt uh, compact fluorescent bulbs in this one and 135. So that is uh, 323, 40, 375 watts in that head. And that's equivalent to five times that in uh, incandescent light, which is uh, about uh, 1.8-ish, 1.825 kilowatts, so nearly two kilowatts of light. In that head, I've got two 85s and three 35s, which is 172.75, and five times that is about 1.4 kilowatts. So in total, about three and a half kilowatts equivalency of light on those two poor plants over there. You see, I've got my light meter in my hand. Now, it's not necessarily massively useful in this situation because this process is so slow. But this is a Minolta flash meter 5 and it goes down to ISO 3. So what I'm going to do is set it at ISO 3 and take a, a meter reading. So let's do that. Right in there. Okay, and that gives me uh, F16 at 10 seconds. Now I'm actually, this is actually an F4.5 lens and it's at 5.6 and I'm going to leave it at 5.6. So if I change this now to 5.6, I get 1.5 seconds. Now, here's the rub. Uh, 
this is not an ISO 3 process. It's more like an ISO 0.7, maybe less than that. Now 0.7 is two stops less than this. So I need two stops, at least two stops more light, which would be six seconds. And because not all of the light output here is in UV by any means, I'm going to compensate for that a little bit more by another couple of stops. I'm going to expose this initial plate for 20 seconds. Okay, and, and I'm going to see how that then compares. All right, so remember, at uh, ISO 3, uh, set the meter to f5.6, because that's what I've got my lens on. That gives me a reading of 1.5 seconds, then two stops less than that, two stops more light, um, entering the lens than that would be six seconds and then I'm compensating by another couple of stops because this doesn't necessarily read uh, just UV. In fact, it definitely doesn't read just UV. So I'm going to expose for around 20 seconds and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so there's the setup. You've seen what we're doing. And what I'm going to do now is pour the plate. Now things will progress pretty swiftly once we've got the plate poured, well, more or less, has to be in the silver for several minutes. So that'll give us a bit of breathing space to get things organized. Just before we get into that, in my little darkroom space, which you'll see, I hope, in a minute or two, in my little darkroom space, I've got the silver tank is set up and ready to go. I've got a wash bottle of water to rinse the developer off when the developer's done. The developer is uh, ready to go. I've got a couple of trays in there, everything's ready and set up. The wet plate holder is in there ready to go. So uh, I don't have to run around looking for anything. I'm organized and everything's ready. So let's go and see plate pouring. Okay, so just before we get into this, uh, a quick word about um, the exposure reading we just took. When I was repositioning my lights, I noticed that the big bank wasn't actually turned on. It's a bit difficult to tell from behind. Um, so I, I turned it on and retook the exposure, and that gave me one second uh, at f5.6. So two stops more than that is four seconds. If I give it another couple of stops, that's uh, 16 seconds. So around 20 seconds still feels about right to me, and that's what we're going to uh, stick with for now. Um, and we'll, we'll try that with, uh, with this poor boy. We're going to use the other one when we go outside. Okay, so I'm ready to pour. I've got some uh, plates over here. Uh, now, I've previously prepared these plates, and what I've done, and I've cut them down from a large sheet, from a sheet that's A2 size, I believe. So I've cut them down, I've sanded the edges so that they're... Um, they're not going to cut my fingers to ribbons for a start and it just gives us a little burr for the fluids to stay on the plate. I've also, and I'll show this in another video at another time, uh, I've subbed these plates with uh, albumin and uh, not just down the edges with a cotton bud like many people do but I've actually coated the entire plate on one side with albumin. So I do have to remember which side is up and it's that side. Uh, albumin just helps the collodion to stay on the glass plate. When I uh, was first doing collodion, and I was in Brussels maybe about 10 years ago, my word, I had a hard time getting um, collodion to stay on the glass. No matter how much I cleaned the glass, it, it, it would peel up at the edges or it would just slough off in the developer or all manner of problems. And in the end, I changed then to... Um, uh, a trophy plate and made tin types, which is way easier to get the collodion to stay on. But I have a particular reason for wanting to use glass plates uh, rather than trophy aluminium, and we'll come to that in due course. Anyway, let's get on. Let's um, make ourselves a collodion. What I'm going to do is change the lens so you can get a much closer view. I'm going to put some gloves on and we'll see how we get on, okay? Uh, 
Okay, <coughs> here we go. So I've got my collodion, you can see it's getting a little bit on the uh, darker side because it's been made a little while ago. I've got all this gubbins on there. Should really have wiped that off when I last used it. It's very untidy of me. Anyway, there we go. Right, some gloves on, got my plate, album and side uppermost. I'm going to hold it uh, like so, and I'm going to pour myself a little puddle in the middle. And I'm just going to move that around. And yeah, I think you can probably see just how viscous that is. And there we go. A little blob on the back there, we don't want that. And then we're going to rock this plate to try and stop those wavy lines from forming. I'll wipe that stuff off later. Okay. So there's our plate poured and you can see I've got some quite thick lines down the edge here because I think this collodion is suffering from not having any ether in it. And I think I could probably um, put a little bit of ethanol in there to thin that down. Now what I'm going to do, just I can use this corner here just to test when that collodion has set up a little. I'm going to leave it on there uh, because what I want to do is to move us into the dark room. I'm not sure how this is going to work but we'll give it a go. Uh, I'm going to change gloves as well because I don't want to touch my camera with these gloves. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we are in my tiny, tiny little dark space. This has had plenty of time to set up while I've made this uh, change of camera position. So what I'm going to do now is put this inside into the water bath, like so. And what we want to be careful of is that when we put it in, there's no hesitation. We go in, we're not thrusting it in, it's not going in fast, but it is going in steady. And there it goes. So that's in the silver nitrate. It stays in there for about three minutes. I'm going to just measure out a little developer. It's about 10 mils of developer, should be plenty. Then I'm going to go and change the position of the lights and get uh, that set up and time this uh, silver nitrate. <coughs> okay, so that's had its three minutes plus a bit in the silver bath. So let's get that out and we'll see. Get myself a piece of paper towel. Uh, just before we do that, we will get the plate holder ready. There we go. And that's that's where the plate is going to sit. We'll put that out of the way for now. <coughs> okay, so out of the silver bath. Now, first thing to notice is that we've got that milky appearance on the plate, and that is what you're looking for. I'm going to take that out of there and drop that onto my pad of paper towels and I'm going to use this piece that I just tore off to wipe the excess silver nitrate off the back. And the more of this excess you can get rid of, uh, the better in terms of your clean up later for your wet plate holder and the better is the longevity of your wet plate holder. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, 
right now uh, the front the, the bit that's going to face the uh, object through the lens is downmost so this has to go face down into here hoping that you can see that there we go then the pressure plate and I will turn that around and then the rear the backmost dark slide goes in place just going to pressure plate a little push right now we're ready to go so I'm going to go and make the shot we'll leave you guys in here because we've seen the setup I'm literally just going to put this in the camera as I go I'm going to remember that the front is down most so I usually put my thumb to the back put this in open the lens for 20 seconds close the lens bring it right back for developments I'm going to leave you guys here while I do that I hope that's okay Okay, we've made our shot, 20 second exposure. When I brought the uh, when I brought the holder back out, I made, made sure to keep my thumb at the back. Uh, it's always as, as well to have a, a routine with these things. So when you take it out, stack that there. I have poured fixer ready, which is in the other room. There's our plate now. Here's the tricky part, developer. What we want, what we want to do with the developer is to kind of pour on just enough. And we don't want the developer really to flood off the plate. But neither do we want it to go on the plate in a, a splash, in a big dump, because it'll wash. It'll wash the silver crystals off the surface and then you'll be left with no image. So I tilt it, I'm going to get ready to pour, I'm going to pour upwards and tilt the plate as I go. So let's get that ready. And then I don't think that flowed as well as it might, but we'll just see how we go. I'm going to get my wash bottle because the image is coming up and it didn't flow as well as you might have wanted. But it's not disastrous by any means. See, I didn't get developer flowing in that area there. which will be a bit of a nuisance, but there you go. Right, so I'm going to call that nicely washed now. Now, before I move you guys out of here, I'm just going to go and drop this. Into the fixer tray, then I'll take you out and you can have a look at it fixing. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, there it is, and it's more or less fixed now in the time that it's taken me to bring you out of that dark room. What we will just show, you see where the developer didn't get, didn't reach to, it didn't flow well enough. Uh, so I'm going to add, I'll add a little dribble of uh, ethanol to that just to improve its flow. Uh, but we've got a definitely a, a recognisable image there, so that's quite, that's quite nice. Now you see the pour off edges that I spoke about earlier where the poor boy can seems to kind of collect um, it's quite thick now the fixer will will take that so I'm going to leave it in the fixer now in terms of fixing uh, wet plate in general you would uh, put it in until the image just clears and then you would leave it for twice as long now I'm going to leave it a little longer than that to get those uh, edges cleared and they will clear 
and then I'm going to take it and just put it into uh, some rinse water and then we're done. Okay, so I'm going to keep you with me just for a moment or two so you can see those, you see this edge is clearing already. Okay, so there is a wet plate image. Now, as I said, I'm going to set up for uh, another image outside and we'll try that Ostermans. Um, and what I will do, the, I mean the process is pretty similar, so what I'm going to do is let you see the pour of the Osterman, so you can compare it with the pour of the poor boy. The Ostermans has cadmium salts and it has uh, ether, and I think that's going to give us a better pour. So I'm going to keep you with me for that, then I'm going to make the plate and then we're going to come back at the fixer stage for the second plate, because everything else is pretty much uh, identical, okay? Now you can see that's, uh, that's pretty much almost, uh, get my fingers under there, it's pretty much almost cleared those uh, thickened edges. Okay, I'll just give that a, a little moment longer. Okay, so I hope that's been of some interest. Uh, as I say, I will show you a second plate today in this video uh, from outside and that's now nicely cleared. And it hasn't taken that long to clear even those uh, thickened edges. Oh, by the way, this is uh, Ilford Rapid Fixer, um, diluted one plus one. Okay. There we go, so that's quite nice, I think. Quite uh, acceptable. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that on there just for a second whilst I take these gloves off so I can turn my camera off. Going through gloves at a rate today. Okay, so here I am back again. Got myself another plate. I've set the 10 by 8 up outside. We're going to take a shot of the barn opposite the back. And the fence. So here's another plate. Just rest him down there for a moment. And open this new collodion. And we'll see indeed if there is any difference. It smells a lot stronger. Because right? there's ether in this one. Yeah, and straight away you can see that that flows much, much quicker. That was a bit of a messy pour, I think. But I think you can see how much I feel much better about that. How much more viscous that poor boy is. It is a little bit older, so it could have had some evaporation, but I can tell you that even from fresh, it was, it was getting those very thick edges. Uh, so that will set up quite a bit more quickly. It's, yes, it's there already. So I'm going to leave you there and get this plate shot and we'll come back when it's in the fixer so you can see it, okay? Okay, so here we go. This is the plate that I've made outside. It's very, very low contrast. I am not sure whether I would say that's worked. The image is of a, <coughs> excuse me, brick wall, fence and barn uh, outside the, the back there. Uh, so and fixed almost immediately, uh, not, not anything like as long as it takes for the poor boy. Pours much more easily. Uh, however, uh, the, by the time I went out to make the exposure, <coughs> uh, it, the meter was showing three seconds at f5.6. And so I actually gave the exposure 10 seconds uh, to start, and that plate was way underexposed. 
Then it clouded over and that's when I got the three seconds. So I gave this plate 30 seconds exposure and I'm not convinced that even that's enough. Uh, but there's the process of doing wet plate. Uh, we've got a couple of plates. I will come back when I have uh, finished them uh, and you can see the finished articles. I uh, hope that's been of some interest and I will get back to you as soon as the plates are finished and we can see what they actually look like when they're backed. Okay, bye for now. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Uh, everything's uh, finished. Um, quite a bit uh, has happened. So here's the first plate that you see. Uh, we shot inside against those plants. Uh, it looks not too bad, I think. Uh, we've got that trouble on the left side as we look at it, uh, where there was uh, an issue with the developer pour. Uh, it added some more ethanol to the developer. Uh, another, uh, another mill uh, of ethanol to just improve the flow across the plate. Uh, I've got a slight uh, issue because there's a big hole right there and the reason that's there is because what I do, and this is my reason for shooting on glass plate, is whereas most people would spray paint the back of the plate in black uh, and then uh, traditional sandrack varnish on uh, over the image. I've done it the opposite way around. I've spray painted over the top of the image on the front and we're viewing the image from the back. Now that has two advantages. One is it's one less uh, process to worry about and uh, i.e. the varnishing and secondly uh, it makes the image right reading so to speak because <laughs> we're looking at the image in reverse, but the re image reverses the object. Uh, so that's what I'm doing anyway. Now I've put that, I've put that image down on the cutting mat um, and it clearly wasn't quite dry, so it's pulled a little bit of paint off as I've picked it up just now. Uh, I will just go back and spray that again just to fill that, uh, fill that gap in, but I think the image does not look too bad. Uh, there, there are still some technical issues to deal with, like uh, the collodion uh, pour. You remember that was the poor boy uh, collodion, and uh, that was a, a little bit on the uh, sticky side. And I think that's because it doesn't have any uh, diethyl ether. So I'm going to do some different things. Right, so then you remember we went outside. Let's change, the, let's change to those plates. I'm gonna show you both of those plates uh, together. Oops, I think I just kicked the tripod. Let's move that over there. So here's one, and here's the other. Now there are a number of issues with both of these plates, as you can see. Let's move those over a little bit. There are these dark spots here. Not quite sure what's caused those. And there's some funny thing right here. But most of all, these images just look uh, nasty. They're very, very low contrast. And I have two suspicions for that. One is that that uh, collodion was not adequately ripened. So I will reshoot these again uh, presently. Uh, and I'll show you that in the next video uh, because I need to prepare more glass now. I've run out of uh, five by four plates and I'm gonna do a video to show you how I go about preparing the, the glass. So uh, we'll see that again. So I will reuse that uh, Ostermann's collodion. And I think the second issue here is that these are vastly overexposed. Uh, I think these are much faster. So when I shot these outside, I used my light meter uh, thing again. And um, that was indicating, um, because the, the, the day clouded over and it was getting pretty uh, dusky outside. So I gave them, uh, I think 20 seconds and 30 second exposures and I think that was way too much. I think this Ostermann's is a lot faster than the poor boy. So we will try those again and we'll try them with much shorter exposures. And one of the things I'm trying to do is to get some sense of 
how the meter reading at ISO 3 then relates to an appropriate uh, exposure time for the, uh, for the collodion that I'm using. And that seems, that seems to be okay with the um, poor boy. Uh, let's have a look at, so what I, one of the things I then did was to shoot these. <coughs> and these are back with the poor boy on the outside. Uh, and these are not too bad. There are clearly some issues here uh, with the uh, collodion pore. And again, a little bit of developer issue here, a little bit of developer issue here, but the developer pore is getting better. So uh, this one uh, didn't work quite so well. These are both, um, these are both, no, this was a, a 10 second uh, exposure. This was a little bit longer. This was a 13 second exposure. Uh, and I could probably have gone to 15 seconds, maybe. Uh, we'll see, there should be a, like a barn roof back here that we're not, uh, that we're not really seeing. Uh, anyway, those are the plates that we shot. Uh, some more to come. Next video we'll look at the um, preparing of the plates and we'll reshoot that, this outside scene with that uh, Ostermans. Okay, I hope all of that has been of some interest. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, bye for now.